Welcome to CivilNet. My guest via Skype from Istanbul is Ohanes Kılıç Dehe. He is a lecturer at Bilgi University and a columnist for Agos. Ohanes, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you too. Uh, you wrote an article recently in Agos uh, entitled Mahcupian as Advisor. And Etienne Mahcupian, a prominent uh, citizen of Turkey, Armenian, was recently appointed as Chief Advisor to the Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time since the establishment of the modern Turkish Republic that a non-Turkish, non-Muslim person has been appointed to such a high position. Um, what does this mean for Turkey, in your opinion? Yeah, uh, yeah it's correct. Uh, for the Republican history, it, this was the first time that a non-Turk and non-Muslim has been appointed as a chief advisor to the prime ministry. Uh, although we know some Armenian names in different projects in early Republican period, uh, such as Jacob Martayan, uh, who took a mission in, in creating new language, new Turkish. Uh, this was, however, the first time that uh, an Armenian, a non-Muslim, has been appointed to such a direct and high position. Uh, first well, of sure, sure. sure, go ahead, sorry. First of all, let me say that regardless of Manchupian's personality or his ideas, political sense, etc., this might be a, a positive uh, attempt. Uh, because we know that in Turkey, uh, being Armenian in the eyes of general public is, does not have a positive image. So, as I say, regardless of Manchupian's personality, his appointment to the chief advisorship uh, might contribute to invalidation of this negative image, if you like. Let me say that. So, uh, all the things beside, I think the first thing one should say is this, that this appointment might be uh, positively contribute to, to the Armenian, quote-unquote, Armenian image uh, uh, in the eyes of especially uh, conservative religious masses who are massively voting to ruling party, AKP. Right. Ohanes, there was a lot of controversy. There continues to be controversy with his appointment. Uh, within Turkey, outside of Turkey, within Armenian circles uh, in Istanbul and here in Armenia. Um, why do you think uh, Mahcubian accepted the position? Uh, I think he openly, time to time, states that uh, it's important for himself to influence government. And, and he also adds that by writing a column or, uh, for years, uh, one of his primary aim is to influence the politics, influence the decision makers. So I think ju because of just this motivation, he also uh, accepted this position to influence uh, decision makers and to influence the creation of policies. Uh, and if you ask me, I mean, after this point, uh, his position has changed. I mean, we previously, he was just only a writer. Of course, an effective and, and, and popular writer, but just a writer without a certain uh, responsibility. But hereafter, uh, although indirectly, uh, he, he took a responsible position. Hereafter, it's not easy for himself just introduce himself just as a writer, uh, as a third party. Uh, from this point on, uh, he has this, if you like, the mission of influencing, as, as he says, influencing the policies. Okay, Ohan, yes, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Um, there are those who say that the timing is not a coincidence. Uh, as you know, we are now leading up to the centennial of the Armenian Genocide, which promises to be a very important um, memorial for Armenians and for the world, and I know also for Turkey. 
Um, there are those who are saying that this uh, uh, was an attempt by Davutoglu, by Erdogan, by the executive of Turkey to show the world, you see, we are in fact inclusive, we have reconciled with the Armenians. Um, what do you say to those, uh, to those comments? Okay, uh, of course, government or the Prime Minister Davutoglu might think like this, I mean, might think uh, to influence international public opinion by appointing an Armenian. But I don't think that they are so naive, so, so naive uh, uh, in this issue. I mean, even, even they think like this, uh, this means that they do not grasp the depthness and seriousness of the issue. I mean, by appointing an Armenian uh, to the chief advisorship, uh, would not change much in, in this issue of genocide or recognition of genocide. If they think that they can influence Armenian, Armenian public opinion or international public opinion by just appointing a, an Armenian to chief advisorship, if you ask me, this means that uh, they are very far from grasping, understanding the seriousness and depthness of this issue. And I don't know, I don't think that uh, they are so nice. For, for, for uh, now as chief advisor to Davutoglu, um, there is a, the perception of how effective or impactful he indeed can be. Um, what areas do you think that uh, what are the areas or the events or situations where Mahchupian will be able to play a critical role? Okay, uh, Mahchupian uh, is a writer that has been writing especially about democratization and liberaliza liberalization of, of Turkish political order. Uh, and as a continuation of, of, of this uh, mission, I think, his, the, the most important role would be played in, in democratization. Uh, and I think uh, Hrant Dink's case is an important, let's say, uh, subject or important uh, issue uh, in the democratization of Turkey. Uh, although in one of his previous interviews, Machupian said that uh, he is not interested in, with, uh, in, in this case because he thinks that uh, this case cannot go to the end, meaning that uh, this case cannot uncover the ultimate responsible people uh, uh, behind this assassination. Uh, and because of this, he says, he is not interested in, in this case. However, I think hereafter, uh, if you like, he does not have the right to say this. Because, okay, uh, this case might not reach to the end, as Marjubian said, but I think it's also important uh, to break the chain of protection within the state. Meaning, I mean, let me try to clarify this. Uh, in, in Turkish state, it's a tradition uh, to establish a chain of protection of those who take roles in this kind of assassinations. In other words, the legal under, uh, infrastructure and policies are so organized in Turkey that the state always protects all the people, rank, all the uh, file and rank people taking role in this kind of assassinations. And I think it's important to break this chain of protection, meaning that even if a police officer or, or, uh, or let's say, a, a, another uh, bureaucrat uh, in, in the state could be punished because of this assassination, then this case can contribute positively to the democratization of the country because, as I say, it, it would break this chain of protection within the state. So although Machupian might be right that this case cannot uncover the ultimate officers, ultimate 
uh, names behind this uh, assassination, I think it's also important to punish all those who taking roles in this assassination. So because of this, I think he also should focus on this case, Ranting's assassination case, uh, to, to uncover all, uh, any, any responsible name in this assassination. Uh, Ohan, is that about the time, just as a final question, that you wrote this piece, the Supreme Court of Turkey uh, ruled the, about the Herantin case, saying that his right to life was violated uh, in, uh, under the Constitution of Turkey. Uh, will this uh, be a, a, a factor in Mahjubian's perhaps decision or lack of decision or lack of motivation to follow through with Herantin's case? Uh, I think it's too early to say anything certainly or, and, and clearly, I think. Uh, of course, it was a positive step uh, of the uh, Supreme Court's de decision, but I think it's, it's too early to say anything because we know that through this case, there are some ups and downs uh, uh, related to, to the uh, court case. So, my, my uh, position is to wait and see, let's say, whether uh, Mahjubian can affect uh, this case and also the other issues related to democratization uh, uh, of the country. Uh, let's wait for a while uh, and see whether he can perform this role, uh, quote-unquote, properly. Right. Uh, Ohanes, thank you so much for joining us and talking to us about this appointment and uh, we'll see how the events unfold in Herantink's court case and in the coming weeks and months leading up to the Armenian Genocide Centenary. So thank you very much. I thank you. Thank you very much. And I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Ohanes Kalijda. He is a lecturer at Bilgi University and a columnist for Agos. Stay with CivilNet. Mm -hmm.